And welcome back to Cottage Talk. I am Russ Goldman. Joining me right now is Jack from Leicester Fan TV. Jack is on to give us the Leicester City perspective on this upcoming match against Fulham. It's our preview show. We're also going to talk about the transfer window as we're doing the show. The transfer window is still open. So we're going to be talking about the moves or I could say potential moves both clubs are going to do on the last day. But before we do anything else, I, I want to thank Jack for joining us and welcoming him to the show. Jack, welcome to Cottage Talk. Thank you for joining me tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Okay, Jack, well, listen, just tell everyone before we really get going and really talk about Leicester City and, and preview the match and talk about the transfer window, tell us a little bit about Leicester Fan TV. You and I were just talking about off air. You're involvement in it so let's just talk about a little bit about that and how people can watch it on youtube i watch i've watched several episodes it's fantastic um so each game we come there's me tom locks phil jamie there's five of us who have a get have like a show every weekend for leicester city every game and you know we get fans opinions of either the opposition club and the home team as in leicester so, yeah, we do that and we do each watch along for every game, give all like insights into every game, injuries and transfers and things like that. So, and you can obviously find us on YouTube at Leicester Fan TV and Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, I would highly recommend watching. The guys do a great job. And uh, I've had the pleasure of watching several of their episodes. I, I As I said to, to my friend here is that I felt bad watching the last one because that was rough. The watch line was rough because it was a, a bad result. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I want to talk about that separately, about what went wrong against Leeds United. But listen, the season's been good so far for Leicester City. So I want to just get your overall view on the season so far, and then we'll talk after that about Leeds United. Yeah, I think the season's gone great for us. Um, we're in the top four. We This season, we aim for the top six places. So after last season, missing out on the Champions League were tough to take as a Leicester fan and it took a toll on the players as well. So hopefully they've learned from their lesson from last season and came back stronger. So, yeah, we're, we're doing great so far. I know we've lost six games, but you're bound to lose in this season because this season is very unpredictable for any exactly. team. We're not, we're not guaranteed any three points against any team. You don't take any team lightly in this division and it shows why. You can just slip up just like that. And obviously, banana skins come here and there and everywhere and obviously pick up injuries. And I guess it's cost us quite a few times this season with Ndidi and Castagna and Jamie Vardy, where it's took a big hit and miss. Obviously, the first part of the season, they was injured. Now they're injured again. So yep. I guess, you know, we just need to keep our heads high and stay confident and take the season from here and now. Okay, very good. And now let's talk about what happened yesterday because I, I was actually surprised by this. <clears throat> but we're also going to talk about the injuries that I think are a part of this loss. And yeah, Again, I, I don't like to blame losses on injuries, but I think that they're a factor here, Jack. I want to get your thoughts about this match against Leeds United. I said this off air, not a fan of Leeds United at all, and I was actually disappointed for you. So I, I want to get your thoughts on what went wrong here and were the injuries a factor? I wouldn't say we can blame games on injuries because you've got other players to replace it. But obviously, with Jamie Vardy, we've not got a striker who can replace him. He's, he's unreal and unstoppable to replace. And with Perez and Ian Atro, they're not really a Jamie Vardy sort of guy replacement where they getting him behind and creating space for other players. And in the last two games, we've struggled to like establish that. Um but yeah, Leeds were always going to be a tough game yesterday. Um, doing the watch along with my co-host Locks yesterday, it was difficult to take watching Leeds yeah. score all them goals and lose the game the way we did. And after Harvey Barnes had scored yesterday, I thought, yeah, we could definitely take three points from this game. And then it just went downhill from there. Obviously, Castagna got injured early on. So that were a big cost for us. Fafana went off with a hamstring injury. So the injuries just kept mounting up for us, and then we we're playing players out of position, and we didn't just look up, we didn't look look right in the game, and Leeds took advantage of that situation, and really they deserved the three points yesterday because we yeah. went at the races. Okay, excellent. There, all right. 
Now, as we're talking about them, we'll, we'll talk about Jamie Vardy and Wilfred and Didi in just a second. But I want to now go back, and I, this might be painful for you to talk about the match between the two teams beforehand. So what's interesting about this is that, that this started Fulham in the, on the right foot. In fact, I thought Fulham were really going to kick on from this point. And in some ways they have. They had these tough fixtures against some top clubs. But it really began. We really saw it come together against your side. And mm. what was interesting about it, and I'll just give you my perspective. I want your perspective. We were really tough to break down. And it's funny because I, I was thinking about how many opportunities did you guys really create and Jamie Vardy was invisible, but I think that actually had a lot to do with how Fulham played. So I want to get your thoughts on the first time and what we can learn from it. I think it's difficult. Like A team like Fulham was on a bad run coming into the King Power game first time round, and we knew it was going to be difficult. They hadn't won. So with Leicester, when teams don't haven't won for a certain amount of games, we always seem to slip up and... With Fulham, they came with a game plan. They executed it perfectly and we wasn't at the races that day. Um, they sat back, invited the pressure and brokers on the attack numerous of times and obviously for Fawn and Mr. Really great opportunity, yeah. which should have been 1-0 to Leicester. And after that point, obviously, Luckman scored and Caballero scored the penalty. And I guess we didn't really look at it and then Barnes obviously finished it later on. So and that was a great just, goal by Barnes, that, to be honest with you. That, I think that was the only positive we could have took out of that game. I think Fulham thoroughly deserved it, that game, the way they played and the way Scott Parker set up. Okay, very good. All right. Now, let's talk a little bit, of, you know, again, talking a little bit more about Leicester City. I, I want to get your thoughts on Brendan Rodgers. And what's interesting about this, and I'm going to share this with you. I didn't tell you this before we started the show. I did uh, the... EPL roundtable last night, and I had to pick a manager for manager of the season so far. I picked Brendan Rodgers, okay? So when I watched the watch-along, I was shocked by some of the commentary that there are some Leicester City fans that want him gone. And I know it's probably a very small minority, (laughs) but it shocked me, Jack, because I think he's done a fantastic job. When you look at you winning the title and then – Going, you know, go, going, going up and down, right? Mm. He basically has now got you going on the way up again, to the point where you know, again, you can argue that you can be in the chase for the title. So again, he deserves a lot of credit. So I want your thoughts on Brendan Rodgers, and and then some of like you said that it's a minority, but why would fans want Brendan Rodgers gone? It, it's beyond me. That, that's why I wanted to bring that up. I think that's just fickle supporters who only started jumping on the bus when Leicester was doing well. Obviously, I can understand losing 3-1 to Leeds is a big hit for Leicester in going in for top four, but fans just need to get over them. They happen, in it? Games like that happen. You're not going to win every game in the Premier League, and obviously some Leicester fans don't see that. But Brendan Rodgers, you know, we he came in after the Claude Puel era. Puel, you know, not many ever Leicester fan even rated Claude Puel when he when he first got yeah. confirmed as Leicester manager. And Brendan Rodgers came in, he did his uh, nine time nine times thing at Celtic, winning them the leagues in that nine times. And coming in, he thought his job had finished at Celtic, and coming to a club like Leicester, he knew he had the passion and motivation to get Leicester to where he needed to be and he's the right manager for the job and he's took took his places now upwards rather than downwards and you can't thank Brendan enough obviously with a new training ground coming along and the players he's brought in like Castagna, Fafana you know he's really brought in some really exciting talent and without Brendan's philosophy I don't think we'd be where we are you know he's he's really down to earth with the players he's Yep. He likes to get the best out of every player. He's got a really special one with Jamie Vardy. He's got the best out of Jamie Vardy again with Claude Powell. Vardy weren't the player he once was when we won the title. And with Brendan Rodgers, he's re-evaluated Jamie Vardy and pushed him on. And he's just helping these younger players out. What really needed it is gave them a boost in confidence that they can actually be great footballers and show the potential that they can and make them believe in themselves. That's excellent, and I'm glad that you put it that way. I'm glad you're sharing this because I, I think the the mark of a good manager is someone that gets the most out of their players, brings the talent out. Like you said, Jamie Vardy at this point is an extremely talented player, but to take it to a, even another level, 
you have to give Vardy credit, but you also have to give the manager. And like you said, these young players coming along, he has something to do with that. So that to me is a positive point on Brendan Rodgers. And also a reason why, you know, and again, when I was looking at when I was asked, who is the manager of the season so far? I, I, the first name, it really was Brendan Rodgers. I can't think of another name. The other guys came up with other names, and I'm thinking, no, no, no. It, it's got to be Rodgers. It has to be Rodgers. That was that was my opinion on that. And you kind of backed up why I felt that way or feel that way, Jack. And, uh, you know, like you said, some fans are going to be fickle on that. And I guess under, after a bad loss, you might feel that way. Or even the first time you play Fulham, you might be like, well, what's going on? You know what? You're going to have these matches, but let's go back to the positive feeling. Like you said on your show, this is the whole thing, and this also involves Brendan Rodgers. You had this really nice run. So yeah. why, are, why are, are some so f- focused on one bad loss and forget about the great run that you had? That's it. I think that's it with some fans. You can't please everybody, and that's in every football team, every fan. Yeah. Team. Exactly. As you, say, as you say about Brendan Rodgers, you know, you could put him up there as one of the best managers in the Premier League. Obviously, yeah. people are bound to go for Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola. Or Pep. And, Someone and, made the argument for Pep, but I mean, come on, look at the mm, talent difference. Nothing well, against it. Leicester City, but they can pick whoever they want. That's because they're a big club, isn't it? Well, so-called big team. They only focus on the bigger teams that have got world-branded names like yeah. Liverpool, Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal. Teams who's bigger in the world and around the world, teams like Leicester have built themselves on merit, pride exactly. and, and passion. And obviously, we don't yep. just buy players for the sake of it. We've spent our money wisely and produced the goods. There's a plan behind it, Jeff. Yeah, a blueprint. There's a blueprint. And that's what, again, that's what separates, you know, and that's why I could get behind your side, Leicester City, compared to a Man City. Man City, well, it's easy to buy all, all these great players. That's and and you have a great coach, he'll make it work. When you mm. actually have to work at it and fit these players into, like you said, a blueprint, a plan, that's a different thing. And that also shows the ability of a manager and also ownership and everything together, working together as a team. You have a, you have a team, and that's why I have nothing bad to say about Leicester City because I'm I can really see what you're building there. And that's why, again, going back to Brendan Rodgers, Again, I'll say it one more time. He, for me, is the manager of the season so far in the Premier League, and, I'm, and I have no issues saying that. Okay, coming up next, Jack and I are going to talk about the end of the January transfer window, and we'll finish up, obviously, with previewing the upcoming match between our sides on Wednesday. Okay, Jack, let's get to it. Let me just start with you before I talk a little bit about what Fulham have been doing. Let's talk about what's going on with Leicester City. I've, I've seen some rumblings today. Your thoughts on what's been going on with Leicester? Well, I don't know like we're going to bring anybody in. We've been linked with Maitland-Niles from Arsenal. I saw that. Um, Arsenal was not willing to let him go to Leicester because of Leicester and the European places. They've now agreed to him to go to West Brom. Um, we've been linked with Nathaniel Shalabar from Watford. Yeah. Um. I'm not too keen on that one because I think we need upgrades rather than downgrades. But Chowdhury to Newcastle. Looks I, I've off. seen that. <clears throat> so it, I don't think, you know, with January window this time, we needed a striker because Jamie Vardy, you know, is injured and we needed a striker to the backup. So Josh King from Bournemouth for me or Diego Costa, but. We're not going to get either of them this January window. Brendan Rodgers said he's not going to sign anyone till the summer up front. So okay, so it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long, patient season. Okay, very good. All right. Well, now I'm going to talk a little bit about Fulham. And it's funny, Jack, because as I did a a show, the EPL roundtable, <clears> and <throat> Fulham had the uh, draw, and then these results that did not go their way including Tottenham not helping Fulham with Brighton, which I'm still upset about. But, you know, again, when you have to depend on other teams to do some things for you to help you, that's where it gets difficult, and Fulham are in that position. But it also really was dealing with all the talk before the end of the transfer window that basically the manager was coming out. He wasn't sure if anyone else was going to come in. I've been hearing rumblings, the same exact thing, that – 
you know, don't count on Fulham doing something at the end. It could happen, but don't count on it. Well, now we're at the end of the window, and I wake up this morning, and we have this news about about Josh Maja potentially coming to Fulham. Now, what's interesting about him is he scored against Fulham when he was at Sunderland. And yes, I did watch Sunderland till I died. So I got to watch all of his goals for Sunderland. But, you know, it's funny. Um, I, at this point, I really thought Fulham needed to bring in a compliment to Mitro because they do have a striker, Jack. They really do. They need to unleash Mitro. They need to get his confidence going. I think they did that a little bit in the last match, even though it was a draw. But I think if this comes off, and again, it's not official, we're recording this about four or five hours before the window closes, but the speculation is that he is going to come on loan. And if he does, I actually think this is a positive move. Just out of curiosity, what are your thoughts about him? I don't know who he is, to be honest. I can't comment. <laughs> but um, That's okay. Our boss at Leicester Fan TV is a massive fan of um, Alexander Mitrovic. So oh, let's get okay. that out there. I oh, want to say, <laughs> yeah, his name's uh, Phil. He's a big, okay. ma- a big fan of um, Mitrovic. He believes that he should be at Leicester as a striker. So <laughs> maybe he might get his wish at some point. Let's see. Okay, very good. And sorry to put you on the spot there. All right, but I will. But I will ask you about this player because again, along yeah. with speculation, we have been linked very late to Josh King. Now, what's interesting about him and 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 uh, I think we we'll talk a little bit about him. And I remember him at Bournemouth, and of course he, he's at Bournemouth now. He really hasn't been doing much at Bournemouth, but of course he he's he's a good player. So, what are your thoughts? Did you want him at Leicester City? I'm curious your view on him because again, there's still speculation of potential him at the end of the window. Who knows? Coming to form, we'll see if that comes off. I think Leicester just needed a needs a striker who's actually <laughs> going to score goals. With us at the minute, with Perez and Nacho, they're not they're not him sort of strikers. And Jamie Vardy is just one of a kind. He only comes along once, like Ronaldo and Messi. They only come along once. But Josh King is a proven goal scorer. He linked well with, at Bournemouth yeah. with uh, Callum Wilson at their time together, um, and he hasn't looked the same player since. I don't know whether that's because Bournemouth changed their style of play with obviously the new manager coming in. But he did well under Eddie Howe, uh, Josh King, and he scored quite a lot of goals in the Premier League. So. He would have been a player I really have looked at at Leicester to bring in this January window on loan to okay. help boost our confidence up front and get some goals. <clears throat> okay. Well, let me ask you about the uh, striker you do have. Not uh, What's it, Nacho? Nacho. Nacho. <laughs> what uh, What is going on with him? Because I remember a few years ago that, you know, again, there was talk about him. And um, why has he not worked out? I'm not sure, like... He came through Man City's academy, he played for Manchester City. But if you look at Manchester City's team, they, he don't really have to do much, does he? You don't really have no. to like run around and he just get put on a plate for him. And obviously Leicester signed him £25 million. Yeah. Um, and we all thought, oh, we've got a decent striker here. He's going to score goals. And it hasn't really worked out here for him. He's been lazy. It's just maybe his arrogance and his focus towards the games and... He's not really scoring the goals that we expect him to. And with Leicester, he knew he had to work hard and earn his place. And to do that, you've got to score goals and play well every game. And he hadn't done that. And Brendan Rodgers don't seem to want to play him. He just believes that Perez is his only choice. Wow. That's very <laughs> interesting. And and uh, nothing against him, but I remember... It's Ayosi Perez, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember when he was at Newcastle, he was... He, Decent, decent, but but um, has he worked out any better? Well, Brendan Rodgers has just played him out of position numerous of times. This is the only real time in the last two games that Brendan Rodgers has played him up front, so yep. he's really given them opportunities. But okay, I think with Perez, you've got to play him as a two up front, not as a one. As a, okay, he he seems to want to play as a false nine, where he comes back outside of the box to then get players running in behind. So. He's not Jamie Vardy where he can just get the ball, pass it to him one, two, and then Vardy straight in the box and taking the defenders away for Leicester to score. So okay. it's no different. He's no different player. Okay, very interesting. We'll see how this all plays out when we get to the match. So before we really break down the match, I just want to get your view on Fulham because what's interesting about 
when I talk to other fans about Fulham, I always say to them, this is not the same team as two seasons ago that w- that was in the uh, Premier League. It's a completely different team. They're tougher to beat. You've already seen that. So I, I'm curious your view on Fulham. Obviously, we are in the uh, – we're in the relegation zone, and we're seven points behind. And it looks like a, a mountain to climb, but I still feel confident about my side. I'm curious your view of Fulham. I think with Fulham, like the last time they were in the Premier League, they spent hundreds of millions on players that didn't really work out. From they thought, oh, we'll buy this and play and this player. Oh, we're going to work out. For I don't think there was didn't. a plan, Jack. To be honest with you, I think they just threw money at it and expected yeah. for the best. And is it? team like Fulham coming up from the championship, you've got to have a plan in place, haven't you? And then get the players in that plan to build a mould, shall I yep. put it, where 11 players on the pitch and it didn't really work out for them and that's probably why they went down that season. But last season, they beat Brentford in the playoffs to get to the Premier League again and I guess it's not really worked out for them as well as they have liked Fulham. They've obviously got good players in there like Mitrovic, Lutman, um, Harrison Reed. So they've got some really good players. Decker Cover Reed, he, yep. he's a decent player. Uh, is it Cavalio, is it? Um, oh, uh, Cavalero. Cavalero, yeah. Yep. He's a good player as well. But they just need to keep building. I'm liking Loftus Cheek this season. I think he's a fantastic midfielder for Fulham. I think he's made a big difference in the team since coming in from Chelsea on loan. Yep. Okay, excellent. Very good. All right. So now let's get back and let's talk about this because as, as we're going to break down the match, I think we have to start here because um, when I learned that the, both these players are going to be out, and obviously I, I think that helps Fulham, but I really want to get a sense from you how much of a loss these players are. How much of a loss are Vardy and Ndidi for this match? I think they're a huge loss. Obviously, Mendy's no Ndidi. He's not a man who's going to defend well and basically tap balls from players. If you see them against Leeds, he didn't really do much. You know, he could have really like tackled Aileen for the first Leeds goal and closed him down, but he didn't. And then Leeds scored. So in Mendy's game, he, he loses concentration quite easily. And I think that's a worry. With Mendy, you know, you're safe and sound as a defender. You know, you don't really have to do much. He's like Kante. It yep. would run the ball forward and you don't have to worry about defending because then Didi will always be there to protect right. you. And he's a big miss. And when he was injured against Everton, you know, it was a shot for Leicester fans. And it's just hard to hear that a real good player like Ndidi, one of the best centre defensive midfielders in the Premier League, are injured. And with Jamie Vardy as well injured, it's a big miss for us. And two key players to miss tomorrow night in a game yep. that we need to win. It's difficult to like swallow okay well that's going to lead me to ask you for key players because we're talking about these misses and i also want to ask you about madison because he's a player that again um actually has done well against fulham and i remember him in norwich city and but it sounds like his career has been up and down and at times really good and then times down is he just not consistent so i want to get your thoughts on key players and i really want your thoughts on madison Madison scored against Fulham at Craven Cottage last yes. time in the Premier League for Leicester. I think he and Acho, I know he and Acho missed um, early on where he should have scored. But I uh, think with Madison, he blows hot and cold. He, I think he believes in his own hype and it affects his game. Obviously, his set pieces, his free kicks and corners are very poor. He can't beat the first man. So that's maybe a positive for Fulham on Wednesday night with defending corners and set pieces because, you know, they'll think that Brendan Rodgers would have had a word with Madison and hopefully he can change that way. But I think he just needs to come off corners and free kicks and that helps Fulham out a lot. Okay. But, yeah, he's a good player, Madison. He's a very creative player and he's a big miss when he's not in the side. He scores goals and he can bang them in from outside the box. So that's something you have to look at when defending Madison and that. Okay. And who would be your key players? Who has to play well for you to get all three points? Um, Harvey Barnes, Jory Tillemans and James Madison. They're the okay. three key players for Leicester on Wednesday night. And if you keep them quiet, you probably get a point depending on how you play. Okay. Very good. All right. All right. Let's get to it, my friend. 
I'm going to put you in the shoes of Brendan Rodgers. What is your strategy against Fulham? <laughs> Just attack. <laughs> okay. Score and score goals. Um, defend well. Because we're not, we're not good from defending in set pieces. Um, we've conceded the most goals from set pieces this season and we don't seem to know how to defend from set pieces and that's been our negative side of our football this season where we've conceded uh, quite a lot of goals and we're full on now to want to take um, a positive way of that and keep Leicester at bay. Okay. Jack, you're not going to like this next one, okay? I'm just telling you in advance. You're Scott Parker. What is your strategy against Leicester City? How do... Would you beat your team? I'm, I'm actually, actually asking your advice on this. What would you do if you were him? Just sit in the changing room and don't come out and give Leicester the three points. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. No, that's funny. That's pretty funny. What would you do, seriously, against to stop your team? Um, if I was Scott Parker, I'd probably go for more of the set pieces because obviously Leicester can't defend them, so... That's maybe the biggest threat Fulham can be. Okay. When, and obviously aim for Lutman a bit more because he's got the pace. Okay. And to follow up on that, because I'm looking at this match from a Fulham perspective, you're looking at it from a Leicester City perspective. Do you think Fulham can beat Leicester City? And, and again, you should have a lot of the ball. Yeah. Are you fearful of us on the break? Because that's when we're dangerous. <laughs> I think, yeah. If you looked at re- the recent Because you just mentioned then, Lookman, you know, Lookman. V- very dangerous on the break. Mm. If Bobby Decker Dover Reed plays, dangerous. Um, I would think that Mitro would be playing, obviously doesn't have the pace, but we have some players that have pace that can hurt you on the break. We, we do break with numbers. So I'm curious your view on that. Is that a way forward for Fulham? I think a way forward for Fulham is scoring from set pieces against Leicester. Okay. And with with um, Deckard over Reed and um, Lutman, you know, it's pace. And if you get pace on us and we only leave Johnny Evans at the back, then you'll probably score. But Johnny Evans is a good player and he's experienced. And obviously we're missing for Fauna maybe tomorrow night, uh, Wednesday night. Sorry, that's so right. That's, that's a right. huge I'll... miss for us as well. That's right. I was going to ask you, are there any more injuries heading into this match? Uh was there an injury with Johnny Evans, or did I read that wrong? Um, no, Johnny Evans had an eyesight problem on um, Wednesday against Everton. Okay. Um, he should be fine now. Um, Castagna and Fafana, you know, they, they'll they maybe be out tomorrow's games. Well, definitely Castagna. I'm not sure about Fafana because he had a tight hamstring on um, when, um, against Leeds. Um, Vardy and Ndidi definitely out tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. So, yeah, them four players. Okay. Well, that's significant, my friend. Okay. That's going to lead me to ask you about your starting 11, and then I'll share my thoughts on the starting 11 for Fulham. Give me your starting 11. Schmeichel in goal. Um, Ricardo right back. Um, Soyuncu, Evans, James Justin, um, Mendy. Tillemans, uh, Barnes, Madison, maybe Chengiz under instead of Albrighton, and he'll probably go Perez up front again. Okay, very good. All right, I'm going to go with Ariel, who actually has been excellent as our goalkeeper. As a back three, I, I will go with a normal back three of Ana, Adarabayo, Tosin. He, he actually wants to go by Tosin. It's very interesting. And then, of course, Anderson. And then um, I'll go uh, as a right wing back. I'm going to go with Kenny Tate on the left-hand side. I'll go with Anthony Robinson. This is where it gets a little interesting. In the middle, I'm going to say Nguisa, Wamina, and Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Or I could swap out Wamina with Harrison Reed. That's one that I, that is a decision. But I'm going to go with Wamina. And then I'm going to go up front with Mitro and Adam Lookman, and I'll keep Bobby Deckard over Reed on the bench. So that's that's where I'm going, my friend. Okay. It's time for a prediction. Give me your prediction for the match. Um well, my colleague Jamie likes a Desmond, so he likes to go two two. Um okay. if if we can play at our game 
and forget about the Leeds game and focus on our game and wanting to get top four, then I'm going to go for a 2 0 Leicester win. Okay. Guess what? I'm going for a full victory because one, they need the victory. Two, they've already beaten you. Three, you have all the injuries. So there's no excuse on Fulham. Obviously, I have a lot of respect for Leicester City. And I think that, like you said, I, I have nothing bad to say about Leicester City. I think you're a very good side. I think this sets up nicely for Fulham with the situations at hand. Even getting that draw, I think, is, is going to spurn them, uh, just push them forward even more. I'm going to go, I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm going to go reverse as you. I'm going to say 2-0 to Fulham. I'm going to do it. I'm going to say 2-0 to Fulham. So both going 2-0. And um, and just so you know, Jack, I am a glass half full fan, so that's why I'm I'm picking for them. You know, most people w- will probably pick you guys, and I understand that. But um, yeah. I just look at what's going on right now with my side, with your side. Uh, throw out the Leeds match. I'm looking at, like you said, if Jamie Vardy and Ndidi and, and the other injuries they weren't there, I don't think I, I would feel this good. And uh, we'll see what happens, my friend. Listen. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. And please tell everyone how they can follow you on Twitter. Talk about Leicester Fan TV before we go. Um, right, guys. So followers at Leicester Fan TV on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, and also Facebook. So you can find us there at Leicester Fan TV. So go and follow, like, and subscribe. Okay, excellent. And I would highly recommend watching these guys. They do a fantastic job. It's funny. You have so many that are doing videos and doing podcasts in Leicester City. They're all great. And uh, But I, I just want to say I really enjoy you, you guys. And um, it's, a, it's a great group. Highly recommend it. And please uh, check them out. And um, one of your uh, co-hosts did, did the show beforehand. He was great. And uh, I can't thank you enough. For, for joining me tonight, my friend. Thank you. Oh, that's fine. Pleasure coming on and talking and previewing the game. Okay. Well, listen, that's going to do it for this episode of Cottage Talk. For my very special guest, I'm Russ Goldman. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening to Cottage Talk.